Hi, I'm Dave Clemmer and welcome to my office. Today I'm going to talk to you about one of my uh, biggest passions and that's uh, designing and building by proportion uh, using hand tools. So we're going to today go briefly over how to design and lay out your own things uh, by proportion. There's a few examples here. And then in particular we're going to go over uh, laying out and building Jim Tulpin's uh, standing desk. Now if you don't know Jim Tulpin, he's one of my uh, biggest inspirations on uh, designing and building by proportion. His uh, book, uh, By Hand and Eye, is just a, a must-have in your library if you're at all interested in this. And also a useful uh, book as this, uh, By Hound and Eye, it's a, it's a workbook that um, allows you to, to, to practice things uh, by proportion. And then uh, finally, um, if you're interested in, in building uh, one of these, um, the uh, February 2016 issue of Popular Woodworking has the, uh, has the article on it with, uh, with details. And, you can get a back issue of that. All right, well, let's uh, get right into it. What is this business about designing and uh, building by proportion? Well, it's all about the divider. The divider is your source of all measurements. It's not inches or centimeters. It's the uh, span of, of a divider. So the idea is everything is a whole number of proportion of everything else. That could be simple things like the height and the width and the length of things. But it's also... Um, even more complex things, so like the radius of, of elements, you know, the, the radius and the angle of elements. So all those are, are, are whole number or fractional um, proportions of each other. So for example, this uh, bookcase, you can see this is, this is proportional to that, and it's proportional to that. I mean, every other radius, you know, curve and length and width is all a, all a whole number proportion of, of that. And then, uh, so finally, um, to kind of begin the design process, um, you get your idea on paper, and it can really be no, much, no more than chicken scratchings like this. So, so, for example, this is the big table over there, this is the little table, and this is the bookcase. So you can just get your idea on paper and, and go from there. Okay, well you may be wondering, uh, this proportion business sounds interesting, but how do I make it accurate and how do I make it fit? Well, it turns out uh, working with proportions is, is very accurate and is very good for making a good fit. So let me give you a couple examples. Um, so maybe your wife uh, needs a footstool. Um, an ideal height would be the, the hand span. Or you need a desk or a table to uh, be at a certain height or at a particular length. Or you may need a standing desk to be at the elbow height of the recipient. So that's uh, so when you're doing by proportion you take that measurement in reality and then you use that for your unit of proportion which we're, we're going to call a module. Now for something like uh, this the uh, unit of pr proportion may actually be the hand span because this, this hand span and that uh, so that could be the unit of proportion there. Uh, maybe for like this 3 by 5 uh, table, maybe the unit of proportion will be one-third of this height, um, could be a, a good module, and, uh, and so forth. So you, so you take the, uh, the absolute um, uh, measurement and you divide it and figure out your module from there. Now uh, the uh, Jim Tulpin uh, standing desk, uh, so the unit of proportion is a hand span. And uh, so, uh, anyway, you use this, uh, what's called a story stick to record the actual uh, um, proportion. So this is, you know, this is one module. Uh, this is a recipient's hand span, which is like just about nine inches. And it's very accurate, so all these other proportions are, are based on this uh, one unit. And I'm going to go over here to the actual desk. And then, so there's a couple things, the actual dimension, so for example, the width of the shelf is one module, uh, the height of the back of the desk is also one module, and everything else is a whole number of fractional proportion of the hand span. So, um, yeah, from, from here we'll get into the details of the, uh, of the Jim Tolton standing desk. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to uh, lay out your own uh, Jim Tolton desk to the proportions that you want. Uh, so if you're going to do this, uh, you'll want the uh, February 2016 issue of Popular Woodworking. And Jim uh, gives uh, excellent uh, detail about the uh, woodworking and the joinery in this article. 
But from a layout perspective, uh, you only really need uh, this page. And you'll notice on the bottom, there's all these like absolute measurements for pieces, the uh, dimensions. But if you're doing this by proportion, just cover that up. What you really need is only up here. And uh, so you'll see uh, Jim has uh, laid out everything by proportion uh, in these uh, drawings. So, so these are called patterns. And you can read that. I can see that's one module, two, three, four. And then this is uh, divided into uh, fifths uh, there, you know, and so forth. So you can read this and then get an idea of what the proportions are, at least for all the, the major pieces. So we're going to take that drawing and then we're going to show you how to uh, lay that out on the uh, story stick from there. Okay, so here we have our drawing here with the uh, patterns, uh, really the only thing we need from the article. And the other thing you're going to need is to figure out um, how big this is going to be. So for a, a you use the hand span, that's the unit of proportion. So a big person is going to have a big, you know, hand span, a shorter person. So you figure out what that is depending on who's going to use it. And then you create a story stick, which is basically just a straight line. And then it has the proportions uh, marked off. So here's the baseline, just kind of our base, and then this is the one module mark, which is uh, right there. And then you uh, mark off other key, key proportions. You can you know, lay, label what those are. And then, uh, so you really only need one pair of dividers, but it's helpful to have others and different sizes if you have it. Um, and this is just to illustrate some different proportions. This is one module, that's two modules, and three modules. And going to the smaller sizes, that's a half. Uh, a third, a quarter, and a fifth. And then, uh, so it's very useful that uh, the story stick is your reference. You may pick this up and go, oh, what, what measurement is this? And you can just hit the baseline and go, oh yeah, okay, that's a fifth of a module. Or if it you know, falls out of measurement, you can get it back into place. And uh, from here, I'll show you the actual proportions in the uh, overall disk. Okay, now we're going to run you through all the proportions in this design to show you how every dimension uh, relates to every other dimension. So to begin, how high is this disk? Well, it's exactly five modules high, five hand spans high. And five hand spans is uh, usually uh, the elbow height of the person. You want to double check that. That's a, to be the perfect height for the disk. So you know, we take uh, three modules, and then we have the length of the apron in the front. And we also have the uh, length on the inside of the desk. Take that to two modules. We have the length of the aprons on the side. And again, we have the depth of the uh, box on the inside. And we also have the depth of the tabletop on the outside. Take that to one module. And then we have the uh, width of the shelf. And then the effective depth of the shelf, you know, it's kind of like one and a half uh, total. We also have the uh, height of the back of the desk. And we have the height from the floor at which the uh, taper end begins. And we cut that in half again. Uh, we have the width of the aprons on all sides. We also have the width on the top of the table there. Cut that in half again. We have a quarter module, and that's the width of the uh, cross stretchers there. So everything's uh, in proportion of each other. I kind of like to call that the uh, quarter fourth, so uh, everything's kind of based on the uh, fourth module. Now for the curves. Um, so the actual uh, the curves follow the uh, chord of thirds, so it's based on a third of a module. So every single inside curve is a third of a module radius, which is there and there and there. And that curve just happens to be a very nice curve for the flush of your thumb to uh, rest on there. Cut that in half and you have the radius of the outside curves, like here, 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 and there, so that's a one six module. So those are all the curves uh, in this uh, disc um, based on a quarter thirds. Now perhaps the uh, leg is the most influential uh, proportion uh, to this overall design. And so the uh, thickness of the leg on both sides is one fifth module. Now you take that one fifth and you cut it again by one fifth, and that's the amount of taper on the uh, insides of the leg. So it's a nice, pleasing taper there. You take that fifth, and you've got the width of the uh, cross stretcher here, 
you've got the width of the fence up here, and you've got the width of the ledger up there. Now the leg is also influential on the uh, box and the tabletop. So we take uh, for the box, so you have the three modules, that's your apron here, and you add one fifth, and what does that give you? It gives you uh, edges that perfectly line in the center of the legs. You know, on both sides. So this side, you take the two modules for the apron, you add a fifth for the box here, and it centers that right there. Now for the uh, table top, you take that same apron, three modules, and you add two fifths, and what does that give you? That gives you the edge of the table top in perfect plane with the outside of the legs. Now we cut that in half, uh, one tenth of a module, and if you use that for the uh, overhang on all sides, what does that give you? Well, it gives you uh, the corners in nice perfect alignment from the, uh, the corners of the legs. And you can also use that tenth of a module for the, uh, the inset um, uh, for the ledger. Now if you use a tenth of a module for the thickness, uh, such as the box, um, well, what does that give you? That gives you the thickness, you can see these dovetails are in perfect alignment with the, uh, the inside of the legs. And you can use you know, one tenth module for the you know, stretchers and things like that. So that's a quarter fifth that's translated through the, the whole design there. And uh, yeah, I hope this gave you a good overview of how everything relates to everything else. Well, I hope you enjoy uh, going through this uh, process of uh, uh, laying out by proportion. Uh, for me, it, it gives one a deeper sense of aesthetic. Uh, you have, I think, a deeper connection with the pieces that you're developing because you, you just have a, a sense of how they relate to other pieces. So I, I can't imagine I'll ever go back to uh, doing things by absolute measurement. Um, so anyway, yeah, I hope this is enjoyable. From here, we'll go um, into uh, a little bit on the uh, joints and the, and the hand tools and, and putting this thing together. Hi there, and welcome to Dave's shop. Uh, today we're talking about building a Jim Tulpin uh, standing uh, writing desk. Uh, this one is done in uh, European Beach. Uh, so this uh, we're looking at uh, right now is the uh, lower assembly, which is basically uh, legs and aprons and cross stretchers. And it's uh, just an excellent um, exercise in joinery. There's uh, no glue involved at all in this, uh, this assembly. Um, it's uh, it's uh, held together by some pins and wedges and tusks. Uh, other than that, it's just uh, pure joinery. Let's take a closer look. Um, so the, at the uh, very top, um, we just have some simple uh, cross structures to hold the drawers. Um, basically, you know, it's just simple uh, half lap uh, kind of uh, assembly there. And uh, what I think is uh, most interesting is the uh, actually a leg assembly, which is um, draw bore uh, mortise and tenon. So like the pins will drive, will uh, tighten the uh, uh, joints. And then we have some uh, through uh, through mortise and tenon on the bottom. So let's uh, pick this one up. Um, so you see the uh, actual joint. So there's a haunch to hold the brackets. And then I'll uh, turn this around so you can actually see the light going through there. So it's um, so they actually uh, meet in the middle. Um, and then so what you have to do uh, for the aprons, which uh, go into that, is to uh, miter the edges of the uh, of the aprons, you can see like a little little miter joint there. So the two aprons uh, join in the middle and then the, the pins uh, drive them tight. And then so below that, um, so we have like the cross stretchers. Um, there's basically simple uh, through uh, mortise and tenon joints. Uh, the main long stretchers held together by these uh, tusks uh, right here. And then the uh, uh, shorter uh, side stretcher, so that's a wedge uh, through uh, mortise and tendon. And then, uh, so we use these uh, little uh, wedges here uh, to uh, yeah, tighten that joint. Now Jim Tulpin recommends um, two of these and then actually turning this into a dovetail. Um, I didn't do that for this uh, particular one because I actually wanted to be able to take it apart. Um, but if you're really wanting that to be a solid joint, I'd recommend you yeah, do uh, yeah, make that a dovetail. And uh, so then, yeah, we have more aprons here. So then we have these uh, uh, card brackets, so that fits into the uh, haunch part of the uh, mortise and tenon joint uh, there. So that's kind of be held together by the leg here, and then it's going to be tightened with the, the pins there. So that all, all holds together. 
And that's kind of pretty much it for the uh, lower assembly. And what I'm showing you here is the, uh, the top assembly. Uh, the bottom assembly is basically a leg assembly. The top assembly is basically a box. And then, they're, and then you basically uh, join them together. Um, so there's almost no glue done in the uh, top assembly. Um, really the only glue needed was to uh, glue together like Y panels like on the drawer bottom, the shelves here, the main panel, um, the tabletop. And I think also, yeah, I did do glue these into wider boards. Um, but other than that, there's uh, no glue uh, involved in uh, uh, putting this together and, and so it can be uh, taken apart like you see here at, at any point in time. All right, well, let's take a little uh, closer look. Um, I think the uh, tabletop is another good exercise in drawbore mortise and tenon. So you see these uh, pins uh, right here. Uh, so the middle pins um, uh, are basically uh, tight uh, in all dimensions. Uh, the outer pins, uh, the hole in the middle is like a little bit of an oval. Um, so that, that allows the inner panel, which uh, you do expect to expand and contract over time to to allow that movement to take place, so it's uh, that's a good good thing to practice and learn. And then, uh, so the fence on the front, um, I did use uh, brads to uh, pin that into place, so that it could be could be taken apart easily. And that's just held together, uh, just a little more snug, like using a using a rabbit uh, joint for that. And then moving up to the uh, uh, the tabletop, so that's the kind of. Uh, top piece where the hinge goes. So I did use um, two uh, uh, two screws to help uh, help uh, keep that in place. Um, otherwise, that's held in place with uh, pins as well. And then the uh, ledger on top of that um, basically just kind of comes in with uh, pins on top, so that can easily be pulled off. Now the uh, box assembly itself is basically uh, jump dovetail joints. So this is a side uh, uh, assembly, so it's an angled box. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like a standard uh, dovetails. Uh, you do need the dado um, on the inside to uh, hold the bottom of the box and then space for the drawers that are going to slide out underneath that. And then, uh, yeah, so the front and the back are basic, uh, basic dovetail joints. And uh, so the, uh, the side, uh, side shells, um, yeah, you know, just basically simple uh, dimension boards. Um, so I did glue the uh, molding on onto that, um, and then the uh, the bottom of the drawer. Um, so you want a rabbit to uh, slide in, allow for movement. Um, so this is my biggest mistake here. I put the rabbit on the top. Um, you should put the rabbit on the bottom to to uh, hide the movement um, of that panel. And then there's a divider here in the middle so it's, that just fits into a simple uh, dado and then a mortise and tenon on both ends and uh, yeah, I'll show you how this all comes together later on with the uh, um, the uh, molding uh, has also tenons so this this is going to cinch the uh, box together uh, for the top and lower assemblies and I think that's pretty much it Today we're going to talk about building a Jim Tulpin standing desk using only hand tools. Now of course you can build uh, this project and any other use, using power tools as well, but I find it very much uh, rewarding uh, using hand tools. Um, I like that there's you know, no noise and not so much sawdust. I, I like that my cat can hang out while I work. And I really enjoy the process. You feel more at one with the wood and you know, using the hand tools you really feeling the grain and, and learn some skills. I, I, I like all that. Uh, so, uh, so how do you uh, go about um, doing something you know, just with hand tools? Um, well, for one, um, uh, it's good to um, work with uh, undimensioned stock. You know, so here's a, just a spare piece of steam European beech and then uh, air dried um, Alaskan yellow cedar. And then, uh, so that it's one of the most important parts in the hand tool project is picking wood um, that's gonna, you know, it's gonna plane well, and then, you know, particularly like the grain, um, you have to pay uh, 
you know, attention to. So you want to get, you know, as straight a grain and, and pieces of wood as, as you can. Now you'll notice on um, this piece of AYC is like a little warped. Um, you know, that, that's okay if you can, uh, you know, kind of plan, plan around any, uh, you know, warpage and things like that, you know, to kind of save as much of the dimension. And that's just kind of part of the, the process. So, um, so very key tools at the beginning um, are uh, dividers. So we're, we're building by a proportion and not absolute measurements. So here we have a story stick. Um, so there's some various uh, proportions and little labels for what those uh, proportions represent. And so over here we have the uh, one module, which is the unit of proportion. So I'm going to stick this, uh, I'm gonna stick the uh, divider on the baseline and then right onto that one module mark. Um, so that's going to be very accurate. So I can always go back to the, to the story stick to get one module. And often in dimensioning, uh, you're walking, walking across the wood, you know, kind of seeing, you know, what, what's going to fit for the piece you need and then, and then planning your dimensions from there. So once you've done that, uh, then, then it's the process of cutting it. So there's, uh, you know, so for uh, rip work, um, using these uh, rip saws here, and then for cross cut work, uh, using cross cut saws, you know, such as those. And then, uh, then planing it to dimensions. So for uh, uh, getting it down to rough uh, dimension with the four plane, um, getting uh, the basic planes with the joiner and or like a number number five like jack plane. Then getting to more smoothing operations with the smoothing plane. <clears throat> and then to get really fine, you usually do this like later on in the process with scraping planes and then cabinet scrapers to have a really nice finish without the use of sandpaper. And so that's a uh, basic uh, dimensioning and after a uh, joinery um, uh, for like dovetails and uh, mortise and tenon, uh, the back saws come into uh, very much in handy for that. Either like the, the uh, rip uh, tenon saw or the cross cuts and or a dovetail saw. You know, so those are used often in the, in the joinery. And then for mortise and tenon joints, uh, certainly uh, chisels are involved. So you have some mortise chisels, a firmer chisel and some herring chisels. And then, so yeah, a lot of joiner work is done with those. And then for specialized tasks, um, so this bow saw came in handy for um, cutting curves, like for the brackets. Um, so that's very nice to have. And then this uh, um, uh, combination plane used for uh, some uh, dados. Um, I really fell in love with uh, uh, molding planes on this project. So I just, this one's a, a beater, and then this is a profile for the actual uh, molding. And then this is the first time I learned to use a scratch stock because I had to do a bead along a curve um, using like a knife knife profile such as this. So that was, that was a fun uh, learning experience. And let's see, what else? Of course, you know, marking gauges and knives and squares and, and uh, yeah, certainly a rabbit plane for rabbits. Um, doing, you know, all the, all the holes with the brace and uh, yeah, so it's a definitely a rewarding experience. And I think that covered most of these tools here. A little bit of rasping once in a while. And uh, finally, so I showed you like the saw bench down here is a very handy thing to have. So you can uh, you can you know, do cross cuts here. You can do you know rips along here. And of course, things like you know bench hooks are essential. Base playing stops, things like that. Um, but that's, yeah, pretty much it.